Hey, what is up guys? BoHD here, and this is the Sony Xperia Z3V, or should I say the Sony Xperia Z2V, because it really best resembles the Sony Xperia Z2, at least in terms of the design. As you can see, this phone is made of primarily plastic or rubber and glass. You have a nice sheet of glass on the front and a nice sheet of glass on the back, which feels pretty good. It definitely feels like an expensive device. It's heavy and has a very rigid frame, and it feels like it's made of premium materials because it is. What it doesn't have is those nice aluminum edges found on the Xperia Z3. On the Z3V, the edges are actually rubberized. Technically, there is a little strip of metal, but it's pretty much overshadowed by plastic, and it just doesn't feel quite as good in the hands because the edges just are much more sharp and not as round. If we take a look around the Xperia Z3V, we'll find the SIM card slot and the micro USB port slots on the left hand side, both of which are covered up because the device is IPS68 certified, so it's waterproof. On the right hand side, we'll find the micro SD card slot, power sleep on off button, and volume up and down controls along with a dedicated camera shutter button on the bottom. Up top, we'll find nothing but the 3.5mm headphone jack and then nothing on the bottom. On the front of the Z3V, we'll find that Verizon Tramp Stamp logo on the top of the device, letting you know that this is a Verizon device. It looks terrible, it's one thing to have the Verizon logo on the back, but up front, come on now Verizon, really? There is however a 2.2 megapixel front facing camera next to that Tramp Stamp, along with ambient light sensors, and then there's just a Sony logo down below. On the back of the Z3V lies the 20.7 megapixel camera and flash, with another Verizon 4G LTE logo on the back, and the Xperia branding on the bottom. The back does feature wireless charging, however, which is very unique to this model, so that is pretty useful, and it definitely works, but just overall the design of this phone is big, sleek, but rather uncomfortable to hold just because those edges aren't as round as the standard Xperia Z3. But if you power the device on and take a look at the display, Sony doesn't disappoint here in terms of display quality. It's a 1080p panel that looks pretty good. Definitely not the best looking display I've seen, but you know, it's solid. Colors look very sharp and vibrant, especially reds and blues. I can see why Sony went with a defaulted blue background because it just really pops and looks good. I did notice whites tend to be more on the yellowish sides of things. They aren't very paper white to me compared to some other IPS displays I've used and the blacks just aren't as deep as I'd like them to be for an IPS LCD display. I mean, there's nothing about this display that's really bad, but there are some areas where it could definitely use some improvement. And as for the performance of this device, the Z3V comes equipped with a Snapdragon 801 quad-core processor, clocked at 2.5 GHz paired with 3 GB of RAM, so it's, you know, the same as the Z3. And performance is good, I can cruise through this OS no problem. Simple things like opening up the app drawer and settings is very responsive and quick. The Sony skin on top of Android 4.4.4 KitKat is one of the fastest OEM skins I've used. The more I use the Z3V though, I do notice it does have a tough time running some Google apps. Google now stutters quite a bit when you first boot it up. Same with the new Google Inbox app I've been playing around with for a while. Once the apps are up and running for a while though, the performance and fluidity definitely improves quite a bit. But when you first boot up apps, the Z3V stutters for a few seconds, as if it's sort of waiting for the processor to catch up and optimize itself. It's just one of those areas where the device could come across as being even more quick if it just did a better job rendering each app to make it visually more appealing and fluid. Now the Xperia Z3V has a great camera. It has a 20.7 megapixel camera sensor with an f2.0 aperture, and it's one of the best cameras on the market. I recently took it out to the pumpkin patch to snap some photos, and I accidentally deleted all of the photos. So instead I went around and took some standard outdoor pictures along with some indoor pictures, a couple of which do feature some fall pumpkin themes in them, but the quality is still very impressive. It's able to snap very color accurate images that aren't very saturated, which means you can always edit them in post-production. The video quality is also top notch, I mean it's just really nice to look at. The Z3V features digital image stabilization, which isn't the same as optical image stabilization, but it still manages to make videos appear relatively shake-free, which is pretty impressive considering how shaky I was from being outside in cold, wet weather. 
The only thing that I really don't like about this camera is that in terms of megapixels, this camera is identical to the standard Xperia Z3 camera sensor, but in fact, it actually uses the same camera sensor found on the Xperia Z2 instead of the newer and improved camera sensor on the Z3. So basically, image quality could be better. It's great now, but it could be even better with the Z3 sensor. And I mentioned the Z3V does have a couple of unique features. One of them is that it actually has a larger 3200 milliamp battery inside. The other is that it features wireless charging, both of which the standard Xperia Z3 does not offer. But battery life on here is really good. As you can see, I can easily get one day of use out of this phone, sometimes even two, depending on how much I actually use my phone. And if I really need to squeeze out every last drop of battery life, they have an ultra stamina mode, which creates more efficient power consumption. And so overall, standby time is great. Wireless charging is handy. And you know, if they're gonna compromise on design, at least they didn't compromise on the battery. And so overall, the Sony Xperia Z3V is a really solid phone. It's fast, has a good display, and the design is pretty solid. It's waterproof, has a very solid camera with plenty of added bells and whistles, a big battery, and it's even one of the first smartphones with PS4 remote play, a feature that I wasn't able to test out myself, but could be a big selling point for some people. And on top of all that, there's even front-facing stereo speakers that make watching videos and media just much more enjoyable, especially with that 1080p display. I mean, just because I can find areas of improvement, it doesn't change the fact that this is still a good phone. If anything, it just means that there is room for improvement and that the Z3V could be even better. It could have a more metallic smooth design with less branding plastered on it. It could have a better display with a better white balance. It could even have a camera sensor that takes even more detailed images. But just because it doesn't and isn't as good as the standard Z3 in a lot of ways, it doesn't make it a bad phone at all because it's not. Are there better options out there? Yes, but you know, if you're on Verizon or really in the US and are dying to get your hands on an Xperia device, there's not a lot of options for you. The Sony Xperia Z3V might be your only option. And honestly, it's a good option that shouldn't disappoint. And so with that said, that is my review of the Sony Xperia Z3V for Verizon. As always guys, I'm BoHD from PhoneDog.com. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. See ya.